Welcome back, this is Part-Time Guardian. And what I'm going to talk about today is I did want to really make a good Titan build for this season. But to be honest with you, for the last few seasons, I haven't played a lot of Titan just because the builds, they didn't really seem to be that overpowered. You know, there's a lot that you could do with the Warlock, with Freezing. There was a lot you could do with the Hunter, with actually going invisible and staying alive and extra DPS and, you know, Star of Scales and stuff like that. So I really wasn't excited. But to be honest with you, as I was putting together this build, I was talking to, actually, there was someone in the comments on one of my videos who mentioned Dune Marchers. And so while I was putting this video together, I actually dawned on me how you could put a really strong PvE-focused build with Dune Marchers, with a bunch of the seasonal mods, and elemental mods. And honestly, it's worked out really well. And this may be my main for GMs and other content this season. So first off, let's talk about the goal for the build. The goal for this build, again, is what you have, again, in other videos I've talked about for most PvE, especially endgame content. You want to be able to be a clearing ad monster. You want to get as much DPS possible, and you want to stay alive. Because I think that's something that people undervalue in endgame content is you see stats for people, and they can do a lot of DPS, and they can do it. But if they die all the time, especially if you're doing GMs, you're going to run out of tokens, right? Same thing in, in raids, especially when we do master, you're going to run out of tokens, right? You're going to have problems. And when more people are down, the chances of other people down increase. So staying alive is one of the most important things. And I've never been able to do a great build on a Titan to do that with Warlocks and Hunters I have. But in this build, I'll be able to achieve that. And again, actually exceed some of those other builds. So first off, I'm going to start out with Middle Tree Sunbreaker. So for those that don't know, Middle Tree Sunbreaker obviously is the one with the throwing hammer and the big burning maul. So a throwing hammer, you get to you know throw your <laughs> hammer, right, to melee attack at enemies, and if you pick it up off the ground, it recharges it. So if you miss for some reason, you can obviously pick it up, but once you kill an enemy with a hammer, it'll also be on the ground, and you can pick it up again, and you can just restart the thing. This is great for small ads, for red bars, things like that. And with some of the mods, you'll see how it can be better for, for larger uh, opponents. Roaring Flames, when you get kills of solar abilities, you increase damage up to three times. Again, this is similar to other things on some of the other su subclasses for other uh, characters. But um, that comes in handy when you're trying to do additional DPS. Tireless Warrior, after you hit an enemy, picking up your hammer regens health. So again, if you're in a bunch of enemies and you go and you throw your hammer, you kill an enemy, you pick the hammer back up, you're going to regen health. Again, that allows you to stay healthy. So first off, that's a good combo just to begin with. But then let's talk about how we can make it better. So for an exotic, I'm running Dune Marchers. And again, I've never run these things in my entire life until someone mentioned them to me. So they're kind of crazy. So when you sprint, you proc a thing called Linear Actuators. And Linear Actuators, first off, give you faster sprints, which is good. But also, your melee kills cause chain damage. So there's two ways you can do that. You can do that for your normal melee, your uncharged melee. And again, if you kill if you kill an enemy, anything close to it, like if you have a bunch of Thrall or things like that, they're going to die as well. You can also use your ranged melee that you have on the subclass. And it's going to do the exact same thing. So you can kind of see this build is very, it's very Titan, right? It's very focused about your melee ability. And so again, this is, you know, when I'm on my Titan, I do like to punch things. But this combination just right here, before I get into the mods, I didn't know this existed. And honestly, it's really fun. So regardless as if you do the rest of the mods and things that I've done, done them in this build, I would definitely try this out. So next, let's talk about the mods. So first off, on my helmet, I'm going to first off put hands-on twice. Because again, it's it's fairly cheap uh, this season. And you get super energy from melee kills, right? And you can stack it. Obviously, when you double stack it, it's going to have a less effect. But again, you know, it's going to help you get your super back a little bit quicker. I then use Melee Wellmaker. And so again, this is a, a well mod that you get wells from melee kills. So again, you can actually punch something with your uncharged melee or you can go and use your hammer, right, to do it from range. So again, there's always small red bar ads and things like that. And they're fairly easy to kill with one shot with your melee. So there's never an excuse never to have wells within an encounter. And because you'll be punching things, and we'll, we'll see how you, talk, you stay alive later on in the video, but when you're punching things, you're close to those things. So picking up the wells will be really simple. On my arms, I use Fire and Ice. So this is a kind of cool, interesting mod in the seasonal uh, track. When you get uh, champion kills, spawn random solar and stasis wells. Obviously, you don't need stasis wells, but maybe someone in your fire team does. 
It's kind of like a hit or miss sort of thing, but I like it. It's cheap. It's pretty easy to put on, and it allows you really easily to, when you get a champion, you can get just one well. You can get no wells. That's happened to me. But you can also get a... Uh, I've also gotten two solar wells out of a single champion kill. So again, it's only one point. That's one of the things I decided to use. Then obviously on your arms, you're going to put whatever other champion mods you want to put on. Now, obviously later on the build, I'll talk about a melee um, mod that you can put on that'll actually allow you to stun overload. So you don't necessarily need that throughout this build, but we'll talk about that in a minute. On the chest... I use Well of Life. You get health regen after gaining a well. And it lasts for 10 seconds. So this works differently than some other things. This actually, it's almost like revamped recovery. You're constantly getting health regen, right? So you have other mods that kind of help you with things like this. But this one's cool because it continuously happens over a period of time, right? So that's why I like it. And actually, I was surprised at how effective it is on keeping you alive. And again, if you get wells constantly... You're constantly going to get health regen, which again, in end game content is key, something you really want. So Font of Might. So Font of Might, again, for those who aren't familiar, if you get a well um, and you pick it up, and let's say you pick up the well and let's say it's solar. If you're using solar weapons, you also get a 25% buff for 10 seconds of damage. So again, if you're running things like Vex or you know other big solar weapons, and there's plenty of them in the game, plenty of fusion rifles for that matter, you'll do an incredible amount of damage. So I, I really enjoy that. So with this build, I'm actually not using particle deconstruction. You could obviously change that, but it's always hard to fit what class item one you're going to use. And I already have Fauna Might. And since I'm giving you wells constantly, I didn't see a reason for it. Now, again, it is good and you could use it, but instead I'm going to use Withering Heat. That's a new mod. And that was a mod at first that didn't have a description when they first released it, but they have since then. So now causing damage with a solar ability Weakens champions for a short period of time for a 30% debuff. So why that's really great is that if you have Fawn of Might going, if you have this going, so in other words, let's say you... you So this is all champions. This isn't the ones you stun. So let's say your friend stunned it with whatever they're doing, and you put this on that, that puts that debuff on them. So then let's say you use a solar weapon on top of them with Fawn of Might and everything else. So with this, I was literally going to overload champions, use a melee, melee to stun them, this will put a debuff on them, and I would switch over to my rocket launcher, which I'll talk about in a minute, and you could use Vax or something else, and I was melting them with one hit. Again, in GMs, this is really going to be really good because, again, overloads are incredibly annoying, and you want to take them down as quickly as possible. And then I also use Thermoclastic Strike. So this says Solar Ability Stun Overload Champion. So again, when I use my melee on the overload, it's going to stun them. And again, that's worth a mod within your arm so you could do other things. If you do this, you could actually cover with your mods and this, you could cover all three uh, champion types, which again, would really help your fire team. So then let's let's talk about um, weapons. So again, this is a very solar focused build. And again, this is what Bungie is doing with the Elemental Well uh, mods and the builds that are based on them, which, which I'm fine with that. Because again, don't ever let that limit you. You always can have people, again, unless you're doing solo content, that's different. But you can always get someone on your fire team to have the other burns so that you can maximize. In fact, you could have people who specialize across all three, and it really could help you in, in these raids or in these GMs or other content. But let's talk about weapons again. So I utilize Vex, of course, sent to the solar, and it'll do more damage on a might, and it's been buffed this season, and I have the catalyst, which get that if you don't, and it's not that difficult. Go in and do that now. And then it can do normal and linear mode. Again, because of that, it's just an all-around PvE monster. It's crazy because, you know, when I first got Vex, it was just so underpowered. But now it's just amazing how much, and I think Bungie planned it that way, how much once people had started getting it and, and they knew they were going to do this fusion rifle season, how much this was going to become something that would change the meta. I also use my Time Loss Rocket Launcher from Vault of Glass, and it has Overflow and Cluster as uh, perks, and obviously has other perks on it, and then Black Powder. Once I hit a champion, again, I talked about this earlier, with a stun and debuff them, I could easily take them down with one rocket. Again, and on DPS, that's going to be nice. So, you know, obviously you'll have that, you'll have this and Vex that you can use linear mode to do additional damage. So it's going to be kind of crazy. Outside of that, round it out with whatever you want. I use Chroma Rush for anti-barrier. Um, I already have overload cover of my hammer and you can do unstoppable effects, right? So whatever you want on your rest of those, those are fine. Again, the goal of this build is to synergize around solar abilities to remove ads from the battleground with your melee ability and then build your mod loadout based on melee kills and picking up solar wells. 
Honestly, I had planned to probably run my Hunter and Warlock and GMs. I already talked about this this season, just like last season. But I'm seriously considering when I'm going into hard content, actually using this build. And if I do attempts, because I'm actually thinking about this, I'm doing either flawless activities or doing solo. So let's say I would do like a solo prophecy or, or something like that. I'm actually considering using this build for it because I think it'll be completely overpowered. With the ability to clear ads quickly, to really do strong DPS numbers and increase your health when picking up wells, this build is a PvE monster. So again, I hope this, this video provides value to you. If it does, feel free to like the video, subscribe, and also jump into my Discord where I'm trying to grow a uh, growing community. And I'll see you guardians in the tower.